we were offering deals to free agents. So in our signed category, we just have a bunch of uh, our rookies. Um, and we see just kind of all the guys that we've offered renewable contracts to, which is pretty much everyone that is available to have their contract renewed. And then if we look at free agency, we have made offers to Shohei Otani, giving him a 10 year deal with the max that they let us give him, 35 million a year. Harrison Bader from the Yankees, offered him a five year deal. Uh, love his fielding, speed, contact combination. Blake Snell gave him a shorter deal, but a little bit higher of payday than the Padres offered him. Matt Chapman gave him a two year deal as well. Want him to be a cornerstone at third. And then Cody Bellinger, who we could see playing somewhere in the outfield, but also potentially at first base, depending on how Torkelson performs. So those are our offers right now. I'm thinking about sending one, maybe Grandal's way. Um, we don't really have many other options in the catching department among guys who are younger. Uh, Garver's already 33. He had a pretty good year in limited action with Texas. So maybe Garver, but Grandal's a couple years older. Had a good year with the Sox. Hit 24 homers. I think, I mean, it's tough. We might have to look to trade for a catcher. And I suppose that's where free agency can be useful because you can just stockpile assets that you don't necessarily intend to keep. So that is one thing we could do. Because Jake Rogers had a good year. Uh, Haas, almost one silver slugger for catchers. He also had a good year. But I'm looking for a more stable kind of anchor at that position. Rogers is in the mid 70s and is a C potential. I think he's already 26 or 27 years old. So he's probably not going to get a ton better. And I don't know that we can necessarily expect him to reprise his season where he hit 280 or whatever he hit last year. So that's one consideration. Bullpen, I'm pretty mad on. I've kind of already said my piece about you know, how I approach um, the levers for better or for worse. I feel like I'd rather just trade for them than sign them to overpriced deals when they might be potentially disastrous. I feel less, it feels less risky to do the same thing for starting pitchers. I could be wrong about that, but that's my approach for starters. I thought about giving an offer to Severino, but I have to remind myself, you know, we have a lot of holes in our team, but starting pitching is not really one of them. Our starters weren't the most fantastic last year, but we do already have a couple of 84s or 83s who are B potential in guys like Turnbull and Reese Olsen. Scooble is lower 80s, but he's been decent for a couple of years. Ty Madden is already an 81, last I saw. Jackson Job is an 80, he's 20 years old, turning 21, maybe he already has. So we have a lot of options. And we offered Snell, if we were to sign him, and let's just say we, if we were to sign Otani, well, Otani's a starter and a position player, so I think we'd be set. We'd have a lot of depth there, a lot of young talent. I don't know that it's worth throwing a bunch of money at someone like Aaron Nola, who is very good, but I don't know that he's going to make the difference between us being a 74 and 88 team and us being a playoff team. I feel like position players are going to flesh that difference out a lot more. So if we just think about our roster in right field, and you don't have to worry too much about this because we can always move people around. Riley Green's going to be in one of the outfield spots. And then we got a lot of question marks. Harold Ramirez could be the starting left fielder on opening day. I suppose he could also play first base and we could put Bellinger out there if we were signed Bellinger. And then if we get Bader, we can plug Bader into center, move Green to one of the corners. And that would be 
be a pretty good spot to be in. So I think outfield we're okay. I wouldn't mind picking up someone on the cheap. Like Michael A. Taylor is kind of intriguing. He's a really good fielder. He's 33, so he's older, but not as old as a lot of the other guys on the free agent market who are outfielders. So let's see what he's looking for. Five million a year. That's the thing, is it worth it to have a guy that is a bench player making five million a year? Not sure. He's also, because he's a little, that's the other thing too, he's a little older, so he's looking for a longer term deal. It was the same with Travis Jankowski when we looked at him. Kiermaier, similar kind of idea. Um, he also wants a longer deal because we could just plug him into the backup outfield and just say, hey, you're just going to you know, play every few days and go get him. But I don't know. I'm a bit stuck. So many of these free agents have the exact same profile. They're in the exact same age range. They have similar skills. And they're looking for longer term deals. So. Maybe we just hold off. I mean, I don't it's kinda like I said with Aranola. Acquiring someone like him is probably not making a difference between us being below five hundred and us contending. Same thing for potentially a backup outfielder. You know, that's someone you can probably pick up reasonably cheap. You don't have to worry about too much. We're good at shortstop with Zach Neto. More than good. Feeling really outstanding about that moving forward but we do need to fill a hole at second base when seal Perez had a good season as I've said a couple of times he was our all-star so that's fine and he has a B potential only 24 so he could end up being maybe potentially like a high 70s or maybe even an 80 but he's not there right now and so it might be worthwhile to have someone with just a little higher of a ceiling for this year. And then we see how Perez develops. So Colton Wong, he's not bad. Problem is he's not as fast or as good of a fielder as I would want. And I mean, he, he hit the 290 OBP last year. So I'm not exactly setting the world on fire. Adam Frazier is another one, maybe. He, talent-wise, is more in line with what we're looking for. He was also a negative four player last year, though, so, ah, man. No easy decisions to make here. We could look at Donovan Solano. He had a very good year for the Twins. He's also 36, so take that for what it's worth. Not a good fielder, not fast. Brad Miller's another one. Only 34. Can play pretty much every position, which is nice. But that might have to be somewhere that we look to upgrade in the trade market too. So I think what I'll do these guys are just not interested in the short-term deal, but that's all I want to give them. I could give Garver. I'm not giving him. I'm not giving him a four-year deal. I could give him though a two-year deal for five. Yeah. Is it worth it though? I mean, he's a 75 overall. That's what we already have. If you haven't already <laughs> been able to tell, I'm going to argue with myself heavily over the next however long this takes so <laughs> pay no mind to the conflict that's ongoing between me myself and I I think Hoskins could be someone that's worth going after I mean, we could get him for, let's see, this would be $8 million a year for four years. 
Okay, so level over eight. I don't think that's that bad. He can play first, he can play the outfield. Well, I guess left field. He can DH, he's only 31, so I'll probably age decently, I would say, especially for being a B potential. Good bat to have in the lineup. Fills holes. Again, is someone we could probably trade without too much trouble should we need to. So let's try and get Hoskins. I guess he doesn't fit the field or speed profile, but that's fine. Doesn't have to be absolute. But I'm kind of intrigued by Max Muncy too. What kind of deal would he want? Four million year. and he's taking too much off the table. But intriguing nevertheless, for sure. Okay. I think we can move forward a couple of days and just see what happens here. Oh, well, there you go. I think the offseason is made just by that alone. Shohei Otani is going to be a Detroit Tiger. So we add a fantastic hitter. One of the better pitchers in the league, and depending on how his next handful of years goes, maybe one of the best, if not the best, baseball players of all time. So that's the big one. I mean, that is something you can't really uh, overstate the importance of. I mean, that's really wild. All right, it looks like I'm guessing, I'm gonna, in, in kind of like a less important note. Yeah, third base coach, uh, Kyle Hudson. I guess he's not really that into it. So let's give him a bigger offer. It's fine. Yeah, all right, cool. And actually, let's maybe give him a little less. Yeah, okay. So he should sign. Uh, looks like we did re-sign Neto too. So let's look at our other contracts. We got Neto, we got Green brought back pretty much all these guys for what we offered them. Uh, let's look at free agency, see how the market's shaking out. Very competitive for Aaron Nola. I guess the Angels are trying to replace Otani with Teoscar Hernandez. Looks like we're in on Snell, in on Bellinger, in on Chapman, in on Hoskins. So I think we're in a pretty good spot. Let's keep on simming. We got Kyle Hudson, so that's finally off the table. One less thing to worry about. And no other signings yet, at least in free agency. Uh, seems like if we look at our offers, everyone is still allegedly digging it. That was also the case with that one, I don't even remember what, I guess third base coach, and then sign with the Mets. Let's see, in this department we don't think signed anybody new. Maybe a couple of these names are added to the list who weren't there before, but pretty much everything is progressing as expected. Nationals got Rias for 20 million a year for four years. I think it's good value. I mean, he is lights out, man. And the Mets, I guess no surprise there. That Steve Cohen won the Aaron Nola sweepstakes. We did get Matt Chapman. That's great. Really like the hole he fills at third. Let's see. Uh, Hader is fielding some ridiculous contract offers. 143 million over nine years. My goodness gracious. It looks like the competition has remained the same for the guys that we are in on. So I'm hoping and maybe guessing it's just a matter of time before they decide to hop on board. Feeling a lot better about our roster already. I mean, we, it's funny, the two guys we signed immediately become our two best players uh, by overall. And if we were to sign, 
the other guys, they would become, you know, like two, three, four, five, etc. But yeah, I think we're in a good spot right now. And like I've said, I think we've put ourselves in a good position to have some flexibility moving forward with regard to being able to trade for different people and fill different spots that we can't fill in free agency. All right, so this is like updating 40 minute roster time. So I assume that, yeah, so these guys are on the 40 man roster. That's sensible, makes sense. So on our 40 man, we have 36, 39, 40. So I'm guessing it's gonna yell at us and be like, hey, you can't do that. Um, so what I'll do is, let's see, we need to get rid of two guys. Let's go Carpenter and Nevin. That should put us, let's see, 34, 37, that should put us at 40 exactly. So we should be good here. We signed Snell too. Fantastic. Check on. Oh man, Bader would be great. Bader and Bellinger. Both those guys would be awesome additions. And Hoskins would not be too shabby either. We still got a bunch of money available. Thing is I don't want to just go on a huge spending spree with the sole purpose of just turning around and trading all these guys just because while that does happen to an extent in real life in terms of like asset acquisition like hell oh, he's an asset I know we don't have a spot for him but let's acquire him and then we can flip him for someone who we do need or who does fill a role that we're looking for and I might do that with maybe one guy or two guys but I'm not gonna because with the budget that I have available I could maybe sign a couple more at least and do that. But I don't think that's the most realistic of all of our options. I might make Severino an offer. Maybe go four years and a decent chunk of change. 17 million, how about that? We don't necessarily need a starting pitcher, but I'll offer Severino and then we'll be dealing from a position of strength should he sign. Okay, so it's yelling at us. Makes sense. Since we signed Snell. Pritchett. Yeah, I mean, at a certain point it becomes like the sunk cost fallacy and he's 22, 61. Paid him a lot of money, but the money's gone, and in any event, we had to spend it on someone who's literally like restricted to our rookie signing bonus. As I've said in other instances, it's not like if I don't spend the money here that it's going into my pocket, so it really doesn't matter. Only a 61 or Raleigh's 22 B potential, forget it. Okay, I think I'm all good in terms of the salary arbitration and stuff. I've offered everyone what I need to. The Nationals are attempting to throw their hat in the ring for Harrison Bader. I don't know what difference that's going to make, though, given that they're not offering very much. Yeah, I suppose we could look at our trade possibilities. <laughs> David Bednar in a 9 0 overall. I don't think it's necessarily undeserved, but it will always make me laugh just because it's so jarring. Let's see what's available on the catcher market. Trevino is available. Very good fielder. So he could be a possibility. Alejandro Kirk, less likely to be a possibility. He's kind of a one of many cornerstones for the Jays moving forward. Bo Naylor. I like the B potential. Only a 77 overall, though. 
Sapphire Pariah is a little too old, I think, for my taste in terms of someone that we would want to acquire and have around for a while. Christian Vasquez could be an option. He's a little older too. But he could be had for the right price. Yanir Diaz. Uh, I think he's way too valuable to the Astros. Although he's, he is 25, so it's not like he's necessarily someone who's super young. We do have some options. I don't have to pour through all of this in exacting detail, but we do have some options for sure. So something to consider. And the same thing with second base. And I'll probably save this for either the end of the offseason or just leave it to the beginning of the season. But yeah, we got we got lots of options out there. Miguel Vargas would be a good one. Alright, let's leave that where it's at. So I had a couple more days. Month. We'll check on our free agents. The Pirates are now competing for Bader, and the Yankees have left the chat apparently. Doesn't seem like anyone's particularly close on Bellinger. And did Hoskins go somewhere else? He must have, right? Yeah, he signed with. No, he signed here. They just didn't even announce it. Okay. Well, that's good. <laughs> I guess he's not marquee enough. I don't know if you have to be maybe over, or at least 85 overall, maybe. But that's cool. All right, glad we got him. Okay. So I think we offered everyone that we wanted for both our renewables and for arbitration. So I think we're fine here with this. We did get Bader, which is great. Yeah, I'm really glad we were able to pull him in. That's huge. Otani's obviously the most valuable signing, but he can't be too far behind. Uh, Maton had a good year for us, but don't need to keep him around. And Aido also does not need to be on the 40 man. Dylan Smith doesn't need to be either, actually. Probably too late to re add Maton, but it doesn't really matter. If we were able to sign Bellinger Severino, we can get rid of a couple more guys there. Uh, Fido's been claimed, so he had a really good double A with us, but it's getting old and only a C potential. Won't lose too much sleep over it. Or really any sleep at all. Did we sign Severino? I think we may have. We did. Cool. So let's see, 34, 36, 38. We still got room. And yeah, we are desperately in need of reinforcements in the minor leagues not even necessarily like good players, although of course that would be nice, but just literally like human beings we need. Uh, we signed Bellinger, so about as good of an off season as you could ask for. Uh, let's go to the draft lottery and see. We have a 5% 5% chance at the number one overall pick. So hopefully we at least improve our position. I suppose with the lottery luck of Detroit teams of late stay in position. We do. We move up one spot. It's a tough break for the Pirates. And honestly, look at all these teams. Pirates, Marlins, Royals all had the best odds for the number one overall pick and the highest of any of them picking is fourth. The Reds are the 2%. The Twins with a 1% move in the top three. Actually, the Reds finished one game better than us. All right, I'll take that. So our free agent roster should be pretty much set. If you want to look at the budget right now, uh, we still have 50 million available. It's really 
definitely not bad. And we do have Patrick Corbin's salary just anchoring part of our budget. It's a lot of flexibility. Uh, we got some random guys here. And honestly, what we should do now is go into free agency and go down here and just see. The problem is we're not going to be able to sign any of these guys for the minimum because these free agents are all not all necessarily, but a lot of them are going to be wanting millions of dollars, even though they're not going to get paid millions of dollars. I guess let's sign Greg Jones, bring him back. Taylor Walls is a good player, actually. I like him a lot. Um, yeah, we can sign him for pretty cheap. Never bad to have depth. I like Taylor Walls, actually, a lot. Let's see. Got some interesting names down here. But yeah, see, like, they're looking for ridiculous. I'm not paying Jesse Winker four million a year to sit in the minor leagues. It makes no sense. Yeah, a lot of these guys are looking for way more than I'm willing to pay them. But if we can find those guys who are willing to take the minimum, like Chase and Shreve, what? Who's paying you three million a year? Danny Mendick was really good off the bench. I played the uh, Mets Dynasty, but I don't know. He's versatile for sure. So maybe he's worth throwing a million dollars at it for a year and just saying, hey, come sit on our bench. You know, just come be in our system in case of injuries. Maybe. I'll give him 1.5. It's just way too much money. Definitely intrigued. He's 35. So, with that in mind, though, 35 can play all over the infield, and I can sign him for 70k. I might as well, right? Yeah. Why would I not? Hopefully, you don't need the depth to this level, but if you do need it, you'll never regret paying for it. Here's where I can start to, oh man, I do not want to pay Kiermaier for four years. I don't want to pay him for, oh man, yeah, this is a tough one. I feel like I'm swallowing a pill that I don't want to swallow no matter what here. So we can give 5.7 a year to be a backup outfielder. He's an 80 overall. Is that really worth it? Man. We still got a lot of money available, though. This guy's the same age. I mean, they're basically the same player. Kind of ridiculous, actually. Taylor's got a touch more pop in contact. But can I get Kiermaier for like five? Maybe. Ugh. Do not want to swallow that pill, but I might have to. Let's see. Chad Green. Yeah, he's got some pretty good interest. Juice is not worth the squeeze there. Hicks, uh, I guess, someone like Kyle Gibson. He's a little older, though. But someone who has no offers. Maybe I just throw him something. Like wood. I'm going to throw him... I did not want to pay this guy 10 million. It's not worth it. It really isn't. What 
I don't know is if these guys aren't happy with the offers that they're getting. Do they just continue to languish in free agency? I guess it's worth testing out, huh? Maybe try someone like Will Smith who has no offers. Or Wood. I'll try Wood. I mean, he's disgustingly. Like, he has, n has no interest at all. Let's, let's just test it. You know, it's not the worst deal in the world if he does sign it. And assuming he won't, it at least allows us to test how these guys handle a lack of interest. And then you throw one offer their way. And Grossman's okay. Former Tiger, actually. Had a really good year with Detroit. Only wants three million a year. It's not bad. The problem is he wants four years. He's thirty-four years old. All right, I'm done looking at this crap. All right, rule five draft. I think we'll be okay. Not seeing any of our guys being selected. Lipchis is a former Tiger. I don't think any of our guys were claimed. Some decent players. Although nobody with a few potential will vest. Former Tiger. <laughs> all right. That's all well and good. Let's keep skipping ahead. All right, I'm guessing Kiermaier, somebody signed. Okay. Cleveland's loving our minor league pitchers. Uh, did we sign? Okay, so did Wood sign? Okay, who signed? I guess I can just go to my transactions and look. signed <laughs> yeah makes sense all right well uh, yeah I got an idea <laughs> Corbin has no business being on our 40 man somebody please claim him okay so woods no longer interested so let's see did he, he must have signed with somebody then right yeah so somebody just came in and kind of snapped him up out of nowhere these guys who have like no interest. So Kyle Gibson still has no offers. I guess someone came in and gave Wood something, so that's that's good. I mean, go get the bag, man. Good for him. But yeah, I'll monitor that. Like, I'm guessing we'll just be free agents. It's not like they would disappear from the game. So just when the season starts, they're still there. But then I wonder if their price lowers a lot. Well, doesn't that make all the sense in the world? One of the most frugal teams in recent memory. I mean, to a fault, not even within reason in many cases. They signed Josh Hader to a nine-year, $150 million deal. Why not? Ooh, interesting trade for the Angels. They're just pushing even more chips all in. They traded Brandon Drury, David Fletcher, and Coleman Crow. Or maybe? I, I'm guessing. That's what that is saying. That's who they traded for Goldschmidt. Yeah. Wow. I think that's a good return for the Cardinals. For an aging first baseman, I mean, he's really good. Might even be a Hall of Famer, I would imagine, but still. So we're still waiting on arbitration. 
still a lot of money available in our budget, which is fine. We can keep that flexibility moving forward. I don't think there's there's really no reason for us to try and sign anybody else. Let's see how's the free agent pool looking. It's been a decent amount. There's still some guys floating out there. But everyone still seems to be asking for the same amount of money, so nothing's really changed. I uh, don't care. Don't care. Okay. So let's see how arbitration goes. 1.5 for McKinstry, 1.5 for Badu, 1.2 for Haas, 1.6 for Manning. So nothing particularly shocking. Um, okay, we won that arbitration, so Torino's 1.5. And Rizzi's 1.3. Scoobal up to 2.1. We have to look to deal him. I don't think he's going to have a place. Maybe we'd stick him in the bullpen, but you know, what's the point? Really liking our roster, though. I think we're in a good place. Um, so, yeah, let's renew these guys. We are not going to renew for that. we can do that. I'm not going to renew his at that rate either. Yeah, all these guys are still looking for way too much money. Which begs the question of how do you so we can we can sign this guy to our minor leagues, right? That's fine. The problem is, we withdraw this because it's gonna add him to the forty man. It's gonna say, yeah, great, come on up. Can't wait to see you in Detroit. Like, no, not even close. All right, so now it's like time for spring training. So we have holes on our roster, to say the least. We have legitimately 58 guys total, and we should have like 90. So here's where I'm wondering how this all works. Here's where we just gotta, yeah. So let's just go sign a bunch of these guys for the minimum just add them to our organization. Yeah, you know, we just need to fill up our minor leagues. Like I said, I don't really care all that much about having a really competitive minor league team. I mean, if they are competitive, that's great. But all that really matters to me is the development of the players on those teams. And so if those guys are playing and they're developing and the team stinks, then that's fine. I mean, you don't fly any flags or hang any pennants for a AAA team winning whatever international league title it doesn't really make any difference so with that being the case I am gonna pretty shamelessly fill my minor leagues with a lot of players who are not very good because it doesn't really matter the other thing is I mean even if you don't care about the results of your minor league games. The other thing is like, well, no, we want to have as many lottery tickets as possible in case one pans out, which makes perfect sense for real life because you never know. Like Colt Keith is a good example for the real life Tigers. He was fifth round pick, was not super highly touted, high school player, and they got him in the system and you know, something he did, something the Tigers did, but he has become a 
very good prospect and seems to be on his way to the majors before long. And so he's kind of someone that you'd say, well, see, that's why you gotta just, you know, build out your minor leagues the best you can because you never know when a Colt Keith is gonna appear, which is fine. The thing is, in this world, that doesn't happen because what you're dealing with is pretty finite potentials and overalls and of course some guys can play above their heads in terms of you know whatever their overall is um, they can show up and show out but all in all you're not dealing with the same element of randomness in the game that you are dealing with in real life so it's just not worth the effort I don't think especially because just so many of these guys are interchangeable in terms of their performance in terms of their potential so why bother sounded like a really like soulless treatise on the state of minor league baseball. I do enjoy minor league baseball as an entity. Used to be a uh, partial Toledo Mudhead season ticket holder. So funny enough to hear the guy who used to find time even when I didn't have it in my schedule to go drive an hour down to Toledo and watch the Mud Hens to say that the Mud Hens don't matter, but they really don't that much. At least in terms of the whole Tiger organization. Alright, so we have an interesting collection of talent. Let's go ahead and, well first of all I'm going to skip spring training, I'm not going to do this. So let's, let's do this. Let's, um, First of all, let's look and see, do these guys want any less money? No, not really. They want just as much money as they ever did. All right, so let's just go to the regular season. And let's see what we have here. We have surged up to 10th to see that our defense is nine, speed is four. So we've kind of checked those boxes. If we look at the rotation, it's pretty remarkable how far we've come. Our starting rotation from last year, three of the five guys who finished the year with us are now pitching out of the bullpen. Back end of our bullpen is in need of some work. So I think what I'll probably do, because if we are dealing with such, from such a position of strength here, I might try and deal Severino and see if I can't bring back maybe a back end reliever and or a middle infielder. If we look at our lineup, so it's pretty amazing. What we have we have Bellinger all right we got Riley Green off the bench which that's not gonna happen we're not doing that I think <laughs> Torkelson is legitimately in the minor leagues um, which we can we can pull Torkelson up because he can play first third and the outfield So we need, we pro, I don't know, do we need a catcher? Probably, maybe. Haas was good last year. Fortunately, he doesn't have to be our best hitter anymore. But I think we need a middle infielder for sure, because one seal would be great off the bench. But that's just it, he'd be great off the bench. We have a lot of organizational depth now that we never had before. I want to check on Rodgers was 1.7 more last year. It's pretty good. We got guys like Danny Mendick in the minors. Uh, 
uh, to right now Torkelson, which is kind of ridiculous to think about. I mean, Kiermaier would have been one of our best outfielders last year. If not our, our best, maybe. And now he's on the bench, and deservedly so. Harold Ramirez was going down, was like a big blow to our chances of being competitive. Now he's just trying to find somewhere to play. So this looks good. I'm going to make some call-ups and uh, kind of move things around a little bit before we actually dive into the season. But free agency did us well. I think we're in a really good spot heading into this year. And it looks like we're hosting the Royals on opening day. So I'm going to end this episode here. We'll come back and kind of get the lineup straightened out. Maybe look into trading someone like Severino or maybe someone else. And we'll start our 2024 season. Thank you for watching as always. Take care. We'll see you again soon.